Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be drawing and painting a gorgeous little oops, rainbow lorikeet for you. Um, so I'm going to get the picture up. So I got this picture off Unsplash. I do have these birds living on my farm here anyway, but um, I got this photo because it was a lovely clear photo and it's the basically the bird's head and top part of his body. They are the most magnificent colours. So I'm going to be drawing and painting him for you in gouache today and watercolour. Because um, I find I can get more vibrancy using my gouache as well. So I'm just going to get the basic shape of him. He's got sort of a round head. I'll get his beak on. Oh, I don't want his beak too long. They've got, they've got curved beaks like a cocky a cockatoo kind of a beak because they are a parrot um, down and around there his eyes are low set so I'm just going to mark in where I think his eyes should be it'll take me a little bit of toing and froing I'll get um, his details where I want them after a few minor adjustments he's got his beak a little bit open so it's come down there like that. Back of his beak goes like that. And then and they're only little, they're not really big birds, they're only quite small. Um, where's my eraser? There's my eraser. So I'm just gonna tidy up <clears throat> a couple of the lines that I'm not happy with. I can adjust and readjust as I go. And he's sitting on a little wattle. A bottle brush, a bottle brush. Yeah, they're, I think they're they're a type. They're they're a, I think they're a bottle brush. They grow wild here. They're gorgeous flowers, and it can you can sort of see the size of the little bird by the size of the flowers. Um, because these flowers aren't very big. I'm going to make his eyes a little bit more oval. He's got his nostril there, and I do adore birds. As you can tell, I paint them quite a lot. <laughs> and I especially love our little Australian natives. Okay, so now the flowers that he's sitting on, you, can't, you can only see one of his little feet. So these are like, they've got little, sort of, I don't know what you call them. They're like um, stamen that pop at the top and they're bright pink and it's got a little solid yellow core. These have gum nuts, these are wattle gums. So these have gum nuts on them. His little foot comes out and around here. I can just see his claws. Oops, that's my little dog barking at the window. I apologize. Um, he's got green feathers on his wing, which comes down here like that. I'm just going to rough in where the flowers are. I'm not going to do their details yet, but I'm just going to get their shape in like that. And there's another one there, comes it overlaps. So I'm just drawing in all the basics. Just drawing in all the basics. Get everything where I want it. And then I'll start to add colour. So he's got his leggers on a branch going up there. I'm undecided whether I'm going to add the leaves in the background. I may. I'm not sure. But, okay, so I've got him quite low on the page. I'm going to add another little flower up here like that. So if you Google these flowers, they are quite beautiful. I have that coming up there. There's a leaf. You can see how small they are in comparison to the leaves. And these leaves are a bluish grey. So that's one, just one, that's a leaf. So they're quite little birds. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about... I'll pop another, maybe another little flower up there just for like that just to keep it interesting actually no I won't I'm going to get rid of those I'll erase those and pop just one flower up there 
on that. And a bit of a leaf, sort of. Mm. I'm just trying to decide, yeah, I'll, I will do that up there. And I'll do it just a solid background in behind it, like a mottly green. Oh. Oops, a daisy. Sorry about that, guys. That was my phone ringing. I hope it's still recording. Yep. <laughs> another little flower here like that okay I'm quite happy with that quite happy with that I mean, he's got beautiful colors on his little tummy down there you can always see the couple of his little claws here all right and the rest sort of just disappears off into the background so we're going to start with a soft background so I'm going to get my watercolors happening over here. I've got them out. I've got to spray them. Make sure they're all nice and wet. I've got my gouache out and ready to go. My two watercolour, my favourite watercolour palettes ready. So I've just got to wet them. And away we go. Alright, turn over my... I have all my palettes. And another trick too, I have all my palettes laid out exactly the same. Um... So there's never any confusion about where my colours are or what colours I need to use. Grab a piece of cloth. I always have a kitchen cloth handy. And we are going to start with a green background. I'm going to go with an olive green background to begin. Oops, I've already got some on my bird. All right, and I'm going to just wash this in over the background to begin. I can go, because I'm doing gouache as well, I can go over the top of my watercolour with some of the brighter colours. So it doesn't matter if I get green on a couple of the other areas, like because these where the, the stamen on the flowers is going to be red. So, but it doesn't matter if I get green in some of those areas because I'm going to be using gouache and that's an opaque watercolour, water, water um, medium that will cover watercolour. So I'm just going to cut around all of here. So get the background on first, just very softly, 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 like that. Oops. Get some more green on my palette. I'll bring my palette over where you can see it a bit better. down and around here okay let's have a look at the picture so I can there's flowers all in there so I don't need to come down onto there I'll just mainly block in the back and I can always add extra bits later as I go Come down and around like that. I'll just fill in that bottom bit. All right. So now I'm going to add just a tiny touch more stronger green in here, just into the back, just directly behind the little bird. Because we do have a very green background. I'll not go all over the whole background, I'll just do it directly around the bird. Like that. So I'm using my a mixture of Sennelia Schminke and Schminke watercolours today and gouache. I use both of those brands in watercolour and gouache because they are my favourites. Like that. All right. Come down here, a bit darker. Like that. All right, cool. Okay, so now I'm going to work on 
the flat the leaves a little bit. Make sure I've got it come down around that leaf a bit closer, like that. All right, and I'm just going to wet my brush because that's dry paper now, and I'm just going to dampen my take the excess moisture off and just soften that edge on that bit there because I don't want hard lines. All right. So now I've got to stay away from this wet area and I don't like using hair dryers so because it moves your paint around and I'm not really, I just want my paint to stay where I put it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to stay away from the background for a little bit. I'm going to work on his eye. So he's got a beautiful orange eye. So I'm going to pop in the background on the iris of his eye. Beautiful, bright. These are the most vibrant birds. They are magnificent. And I'll let that dry a little bit. And his beak is also about the same colour. But I've got to be careful. I've got to stay away from that a little bit. But I can start to work on his chest. So I'm going to add yellow to his chest. That's got a little bit of a green tint to it. So I'm going to freshen up my yellow, I think. It's got a little bit of... Okay, there we go. And I'm going to pop this base layer because he's got reds and oranges and greens, blues. He's got so many colours on him. He's just magnificent. I'm staying away from the actual, the very edge of the paint the, the, where the bird meets the background because I don't want to get that onto... I don't want it to, to, what they call it, feather out and bloom. I don't want the watercolour to bloom into the other colour. So while well, it's still damp. All right. So just block that in. Now I'll have to. I'll, I will go over that. So I need a limey green, quite a vibrant limey green, for the back of his neck. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. So this colour is. Phthalo green light and I'm going to take that up onto his neck and this is just the first layer so I always start just blocking in the basics and I build it up darker and st more pigment stronger pigment as I build up as I go through the layers but I'm just blocking in for the minute so I'll just add that phthalo green light down to here, onto his wing. All right. <clears throat> and I'm going to go in with a, a um, cerulean blue onto his head. I'll clean that yellow out of that bay there and I'll pop the cerulean in there. Because the very beginning layer of his head is going to be cerulean blue. And then he's got extremely vibrant reds. elsewhere on his little body and I can go over those two with my gouache colours come down and around his eye I'm just staying away for a little bit away from that orange down onto his chest so that, like I said this is just blocking in the basics getting everything where I want it I've actually got to put a bit of that green, that phthalo green, on this side of him too. I can actually go, I can go a bit closer to that edge now. I think that's pretty well dry. Oops. Over there. So I'll go right to that edge. That's his other wing. So this is the same green, just less water, more pigment. Like that. All right. So now I'm going to, he's got almost a purpley, um, a soft purple inner eye before you get to his pupil. I'm actually going to fill the whole thing in with that purple colour and I'll do his pupil over the top at the end. So it's a very soft purple tone and his beak is the same colour pretty much as his pupil or as his iris rather so I'm just going to get that orange that I used for his iris and pop that onto his beak 
back. He's got a beautiful yellowy orange beak. They are such vibrant, gorgeous birds. And I'll go over that with gouache as well because I've lost the edge of the beak where it hooks around. But yeah, the base layer is all just pure watercolour and then I'll go over the top with the gouache. All right, so we're getting the basic form of him. I won't worry about the leaves and the flowers yet. Actually, I might do these leaves because they are olive green and I'll mix a bit of ultramarine with it. A bit of brown too, a little bit of brown because Australian leaves have a brownish grey tint to them. So I'll pop a little bit of brown in there to make it that blue gum look. And I'm just going to wet that quite strongly, water it down quite a lot and come down here. Excuse my dog, he's at the window. <laughs> he wants to come into the art room being a little suki lala. All right, so I'm just going to pop that down. I just want it a little bit different from the background. I don't want it too strongly different. Come down here and just fill in that leaf like that. All right, same on this side. I can come down here and anything I need to, I can tidy up anything I want to with the gouache afterwards. So I'll add details with gouache. I'll come down here, down, but that leaf goes down behind the gorgeous little bird. And it's got, it's actually got, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that because I can. Just because our leaves do have a bit of a tint to them and I'll pop, just, it just keeps it interesting, just gives a little bit of variation because the edges of the leaves get a bit burnt and a bit frayed and you can see how well the birds blend in with the native habitat. They've got all the colours that are on the birds are in the bush and I love that. They are just so well camouflaged in amongst the flowers and everything else. So now I'm, I'm also going to do the stem and I'm going to do the stem with a bit of Naples yellow. Whoops. Just a touch of Naples yellow like that. Come down under his toe like that. All right. So now I can do, I'll also use that Naples yellow on the nut pods of these flowers. Excuse me. Um, Naples yellow is a gorgeous colour. So I'll just use that onto these buds. Take that down there and around. You can see it a little bit through the centres of these. So I'll just pop it in. Just here, here, a little bit there. Righto, that'll do. Because the flowers come out and around the rest of him. So pop a bit more yellow there. Like that. All right. So we're going to go back to working on the bird. So now I'm going to go in with some cerulean blue again, but more pigment, less water. So I'm not going to add as much water. And I'm just going to start by adding little feathery strokes because this is where you start to see his featheridge on his little face. And you can see the lighter under feathers. So that comes out and around following the direction of his head and his feathers. The background's dry now, so I can go right out to that outer edge where I've left that little patch of white. Take that out and around there. Just very gently. And I'm going to add a couple of other colours in here as well. But this is, like I said, the second layer. So lots lots less water. 
cerulean blue, less water, more pigment. And each layer will get slightly less water. I've got to come down here because you can see every individual feather on his head. It's amazing. It's quite amazing. I've got to come around his nose a little bit. Come down onto his neck, following the direction of his feathers, always being aware of the direction of his head. And you can see I've added a little tiny bit more water to this. It's a little bit more pale coming down here. All right, and I am going to add, he's got like a greeny blue. I'm going to go in with a tiny little bit of turquoise just around his eye. While that's still wet, it'll blend in. And sort of come towards his beak like that. It's very subtle. You can barely even see it. All right. And now I'm going to add a little bit more, less, more water, less, uh, more pigment, less water to the detail on his beak. So I'm just going to, so I'm using that same orange and I'm just going to strengthen. Here you see I start to build the layers and that's where you start to get detail and a bit more definition. And you'll start to be, look a bit more lifelike, a little bit less sketchy. And I can go, like I said, I'm, do, I'm using gouache as well. So I can go over. I'm going to use a dark blue around the rim of his eye. I've actually got to add in a blue now. And I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine. And I'm going to put that over the top of my blue that I've already got in my palette. You can't see my palette. My palette dripped off screen. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. I keep knocking my palette out of the way. So I'm going to add a little touch of ultramarine while it's still damp. And that'll fuzzy out the edges a little bit. And while it's all still damp, I'm just going to dot that around his iris like that. Come around his nostril. Oops, a daisy. Around his nostril and darken that up, leaving a little gap for his little nostril hole. I can go over that anyway with gouache. All right. And start to build up. So this is ultramarine blue. So, blue, so I've used cerulean blue, uh, turquoise blue, and now I'm going in yeah, with ultramarine. A touch of ultramarine, not a lot. Just create a bit of variation in the darker areas, in the shadow area. So he's got a shadow under here. He's quite dark under there, actually. So grab some more ultra, a little bit more ultramarine. Pop that down there. Right. I've got to go quite dark in his beak. So I'm going to add, it's almost a purpley tone. So I'm going to add a little touch of Venetian red to the orange. Mm, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll go a little bit of magenta. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta into it. I want to darken it up so it's a, there we go, that's a better in the shadow of the beak colour like that. Because his beak's a little bit open. Like that. And you can just see to the inside of it. I'll tidy that up in a minute. And now I'm going to do his pupil also. And I'm going to use a bit of sepia, not sepia, um, what's it called? Neutral tint. Touch of neutral tint on the inside of his eye. You, can, you can't really see, um, I'm going to take that around the edge of his beak as well. All right, I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. I'm going to go back onto his feathers on his neck and I'm going to go a stronger green. I'm going to go a little bit of chromium oxide little bit of chromium oxide because it's slightly darker coming down onto the back part of his neck. So I've got phthalo green light for the first layer and now I'm doing a little bit of chromium oxide. And I'll bring that up, soften. So what I did then, I cleaned my brush, 
take the excess moisture out of it and just blend those edges because I don't want hard lines. And I'm also going to take that down, that same chromium oxide, onto his wing. And I'm going to pop that in feathery patterns down onto his wing because you can just see the feathers coming down here and take that down. It's very dark underneath so I can actually go right down to there like that. And you can see he's starting to come together. He's looking like a bird. That's always a good thing. <laughs> it's always a good thing if your bird looks like a bird when you paint a bird. Okay. So now he's actually on his chest got the most magnificent oranges and reds. So I'm going to go str I'm going to be brave. I'm going to clean off that part of my palette. I'm going to pop a strong orangey red in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet clean my brush thoroughly, make sure it's clean. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of water onto his chest. And I'm going to drop this orangey red into it. Whoops, probably got a little bit much on my brush there, but that's okay. I can just, I can drag that out. Like that. And these guys are called rainbow lorikeets because they are a rainbow of colours. They have all the colours. They're just gorgeous. So, while that paper's wet... I'm just going to run that down and around and then down onto his tummy his vibrant red and blue like incredibly strong colors so I'm going to leave that alone I've got to be a bit careful less is more I've got to re-wet down here a fraction get a little bit of that color down there I like that and he's got it sort of feathering down and around in his chest. Just in there. It's more solid red around that line. All right. Cool bananas. We're getting there. And then on his tum, he's got bright red, like strong red, vivid red. So I'm going to go in with Rose Matter. And it's strong. Down here onto his belly. And then he's also got blue. So I'm just going to pop those in. And I'll do blue in the gaps. Like that. They really are quite amazing looking birds. If you Google um, rainbow lorikeet, they are just gorgeous. Okay, and now I'm going to go pure ultramarine. Very tiny amount of water. And I'm just going to blob that in the middle. Whoops, I need a bit more water than that, just a little bit. All right. So he's got those lovely strong colors coming down onto his tum and I've got to when that dries a little bit, I will add some more um, detail. So this is I'm going chromium oxide green. Pure pig, almost pure pigment, very little amount of water just onto the bottom of his wings. Because he's got, so it's the same colour, just different different values to cr help create the detail. So it's literally just less water. The, the pigment will become stronger, look dark, effectively look darker, the less water you add. The more water, the paler it'll look. And he's coming together. It doesn't take long. That's what I love about watercolours. It's a very fast medium. Now, I'm going to go back into my... Um, wash at the second because I need to add I've got it his eye I've got to tidy up his eye I'm going to go a little bit I'm going to add a little bit of yellow gouache just around back of his eye it just looks a bit flat so I've got to add a little bit of light around his eye so this is where the gouache comes in and I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow gouache onto his beak. So, and I'll just take that around anywhere that's a little bit lighter. You can barely see it. You can barely see it. Um, but it does help me to 
get lights where I need them again. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of gouache, a bit of white gouache now, and pop that. Whoops. Again, you can barely see it, but I'm just going to pop the little highlight on the top of his eye. Like that. And a little bit of a highlight on the top of his beak. Okay, that helps him look a bit better. And now I'm also going to use a bit of my gouache. I'm going to go cobalt blue. And I'm going to take that down on the bottom of his neck. Because I don't have exactly the same colours in my gouache that I do in my um, watercolours. So I've got to vary it a little bit. So I come around his eye. Because he is darker around his eye. And coming up into here. As that pattern goes sort of to his beak. So a little bit of a green in, in that, but I'm not going to do the green because it's too much of it in the background. So I'm modifying the colours just a little bit to suit myself. Okay. And now for his... I'm going to go... I don't have that green. I have a Helios green. Let's have a look what that's like. A Helios. Um, I've got to redo my gouache palette. No, I'm not, not going to use that. I'm going to stick with my chrom chromium oxide. And I'm going to go a little bit darker, a little bit less pigment, less water, more pigment, down onto the nape of his neck. Just at the back like that. There we go. Cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now he's, he is darker through here too. So I'm just going to... And I treat gouache pretty much the same as watercolour. I treat it exactly the same because it is a water medium. Um, I just add less water, more water if I want it diluted and I'm just going to blend it so I take my, wet my brush, clean it, drag out the excess moisture onto my cloth in my hand and just, I'm just going to soften those edges a bit, there we go so I just go just go over it with the brush just dab it a little bit and it just softens out those hard lines, so now I'm going to get some featherage on his chest and I'm going to go in with my gouache again and I'm going to go ruby red Go on the ruby red very carefully. And I'm going to add over the top of where I've put, let the water, like the watercolour run, I'm going to add the feather detail over the top and coming down onto his chest. Like that. I'll add the shadows on the other side of him in a minute, but I'm just getting the basics where I want them at the second. He's got a little bit of red feather into there. You can see the detail. Because you can see, and I'll go a bit of yellow as well to help. And I'm just doing lines in the directions of his feathers to help. Oops. Coming down to the bluer areas, down on his bottom of his belly. It's so easy to overdo it. I've got to be a bit careful. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to grab, if I can get a bit of that orange to come up onto my... Okay, so this is a bit of a... Uh, What's it called? Cadmium. Cadmium yellow. It's an orange yellow, stronger yellow. I'm going to take that and it's gouache. And I'm going to take that around his chest. And around this part. Again, do the direct, put it, making my brush strokes in the directions of the feathers. Like that. They are the very, 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 very vibrant birds. <laughs> incredibly vibrant. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of white back. He's got a highlight on his head there. So add that back in. A little bit of a highlight around his nostril. Highlight back onto his beak. 
get the tip of his beak there. Okay. Now, I'm going to let that rest for a minute. I'm going to go back onto the branch, which has actually got a little bit of Venetian red, I would say. So, so this is a... I've got... Uh, what colour did I use there? I used Naples yellow originally, and now I'm just going to add a little bit of a ready tone to the bottom of the, the stem because our our trees are very bright coloured. We have we have rainbow trees. They actually, if you Google a snow gum, you'll see how vibrant our trees are. They're incredible, and these flowers are bright pink bright pink I don't have a pink I do have a pink okay I do have a pink that's good in gouache so I'm going to mix up my pink my bright pink in gouache and I'm going to add a bit of white to it so it's more pale than I initially and I'm going to just pop in all the stamen I think they're the stamen I'm not really good at flowers no terminologies and I'm just going to pop all of that, just going off in random directions. And I'm going to fill all this in because this is all flower heads, all beautiful flower heads. If you and what uh, Bill and Ben, the flower pot men, <laughs> they used to have these plants. Um, I've got these growing out the front, and the birds love them, live in them, and love them. And we've actually, because of the weather, we've had such strange weather. We've got an array of wildlife around at the moment. Tons. Birds everywhere. Parrots, cockatoos, rosellas, these little guys. We've got them everywhere. At the moment, it is insane. <laughs> it's very loud at night time. It's very loud. These little guys have a great... They all sing all at once. Well, they squawk. They don't really sing. They're not singers. They're squawkers. And I'm just roughing this in to begin with. It's just very rough. And I will strengthen these up with stronger colours. All right. Now, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get ruby. Ruby red. Back on my palette. And now I'm going to start to define... A little bit more coming down and around they've got a yellow core in them you can't actually see the back of this one but I am going to pop it in and I'm going to come over the top of these other ones that are in the background and I, this is where I start to define the shapes of these flowers um, so I just roughed them in, like very roughly filled them in. Um, and they've got little tiny yellow endy bits. All right. And I'm going to alternate the lengths of them too because I've got some are longer and some are shorter and they're not all universally the same length. They're just a little bit different here and there and I can go over his wing. And it doesn't matter that I've got little bits of white paper showing because that helps, I think, to draw attention to it and add little lights and little glimmery bits. You can see how the gouache really helps to lift the colours. Now I'm going to go into the middle of it and go back up to my yellow and pop. You can just see, I can go in with gouache because gouache will go over the top. A little bit of yellow into the middle. Like that. Under there, I'll pop a bit under there. I can tidy that up anyway. T 
take that down onto the bottom of that. Whoops. Same on this one. All right. And I'm going to go on these top ones. Over the top. Add these little blooms. Just using the very tip of my brush. Like that. Coming down, just keeping that sweeping downward sort of motion. A curve down and around. And I'll add different tones, so it's not just going to be the one red. I'm just doing the base layer now. Okay, and then I'm going to add a stronger purpley colour. So I'm going to go a bit of magenta. I'm going to clean that off my palette. Pop my magenta, magenta in there and add just some darker bits around the edges. This one's darker in there, sort of. This is very, very loose. My flowers are very loose. That's fine because it's about the bird, but I just need to get the colours sort of looking roughly right. All right, that one up there is nearly, it's quite dark up there, like that. So that one's not actually in the picture, I just put that one in for composition. That just helped me see where I wanted everything. And now I'm going to go in and pop the little bright dots. So I might go in with a white, a yellow and white just to make them really stand out. Just make it a bit and just pop the little heads on the ends of these buds. These little sprays of flowers. Just pop little random add a bit a bit of yellow, a bit of white, gouache. Oops. Just randomly pop them in and around like that. You can see how the bird blends in. They really do blend in quite amazingly. Just pop little dots onto the ends. Like that. Same up the top. And that'll be my dog. I apologise if you hear my dog barking outside my window. <laughs> so just add these dots. That's a little bit heavy, but it doesn't matter. There we go. And I can also add that colour to the top of the nut, the gum nut. Like that. If you can just see the gum nut on that one. You can't see the gum nuts on any of those. Or you can on that one. Pop that in there. There we go. All right, now let's have a look. So, so that's the basics of it pretty well done in. Now I can also define that a little bit more, which I might do, I'm undecided. I'm gonna go in with, I'm gonna grab some more of my, this is going back to watercolor. This is a strong yellow, just around that bottom part of that eye. I just want to strengthen that up a little bit. And I'm also going to take that onto his beak. Oh, hello, Zargo and Ariane. How are you? How are you? How are you? Sorry, I was I was so focused on what I was doing, I didn't see chat. <laughs> Sorry, guys. How are you? And welcome. Um, now, I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to the bottom of the gum nut. Just to, and this is gouache again. I'm going, I'm using the gouache. Looks beautiful. Thank you. I love these birds. They are gorgeous. They are the most magnificent birds. Yes, these are bottle brush. No, they're not. They're red gum. What am I talking about? So if you, yeah, red gum flowers. And they're, yeah, they're really unusual. They're really weird. They're just lots of little 
I'll see if I can find it. Oh, hang, I'll show you the picture. It's in the reference. That's them. That's what the flowers look like and the gum nuts are in the middle. So yeah, that's my reference photo that I'm using. I've changed it a little bit to suit myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's good fun. And our flowers are very unusual. <laughs> I've got these growing out the front of my farm and the birds love them. I'm just going to lighten up, add a bit of a lighter pink into the centre of these a little bit. Because, yeah, we also have bottle brushes, which literally is what they sound like. It's, they look like a bottle brush, but they're bright red. And I've got to do his little claws, and his claws are greeny grey. So I'm actually going to use... Uh, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a bit of neutral tint, because that's probably pretty close to the, the actual foot colour. But I'm just going to pop it in because he's got quite, um, quite pop it in quite pale to begin with. And then I'll add detail. I've got to strengthen up that. I've got to get some more Indian red onto the bottom of this stick or the stem. And then I've got to get some detail onto the gum leaves because our gum leaves have beautiful, I can use this Indian red also on our gum leaves. Where did it go? Where's my Indian red gone? There it is. And I'm going to take that because our gum leaves are quite jagged around the edges and they get a little bit scarred. So you end up with little dots and bug poop and all kinds of fun things on the edges of your leaves. <laughs> So I'll pop that in. I don't think I've got an Indian red in, I've got red brown in gouache. I don't have Indian red in gouache. Excuse my puppy, he's at the window saying, I want to come in, Mum. Why can't I come in? I want to help you paint. <laughs> so again, I've got to be a bit sparing. I'm going to make some jaggedy bits around the edges because they're gnarled, the leaves are gnarled. And I'm going to go a little bit of an olive down the middle. Oh, my brush has sprouted, sprouted a doodah. It's got a, <laughs> a hairy bit. I've got a hairy bit on my brush. So I come down here. So darken up in there. Our leaves are battle scarred. You're painting... Hello, Joe. You're painting hubby's nemesis. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we've got them everywhere at the moment. The, the place is alive with wildlife at the moment. We've had birds, echidnas, wombats, you name it, we've got it. The wildlife is going bananas. <laughs> because we've had such intense weather. All right, so... I'm actually going to go back into his eye and I'm going to lighten up. I don't like how dark I have it, so I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit. And I'm going to add, start to add highlights now. There's a pretty... And because we just, we did all our, we did all our hay baling this week so we've got it's all fresh grass and the birds love it so our place is covered in cockatoos because <laughs> they're coming down to get the seed that's fallen when we've had the bales made um they're absolutely loving it so now i'm going to go ultramarine deep with my gouache and i'm gonna just build up couple of little areas. He's got dots around his eyes. I'll come down onto his chest because he is darker down on this part and I've got to get the shadows in. So I'm just trying to think I might do the shadows with watercolor. 
because he's got quite a dark purple shadow coming down there. So I'm going to go deoxazone. Deox I'm going to clean my palette. Deoxazine. And I'm going to add blue, ultramarine, just to blue it off a bit. Okay, and I'm water. I'm going to dilute it, and I've got his because his shadow. I'm over the top of the gouache and everything comes down there, and I'm going to add that also under there, and coming right down. Shadows are important. That's what um, helps things to look three dimensional and come to life. Hello, Fiona. He's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. They are gorgeous looking birds. They are gorgeous looking birds and it's lots and lots of fun. Lots and lots of fun to try and paint them. I've actually only painted them a couple of times. I haven't painted them an awful lot. I 